As we kick off our series, Real Estate Risk and Reward, we start with the person most closely associated with tracking home prices. Joining me from Yale University is Professor Robert Schiller, one of the co-founders of the S&P Case Schiller Index. He's also the chief economist and co-founder of Macro Markets LLC. Dr. Schiller, welcome to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Dr. Schiller, in a recent conference call, you said, quoting here, my intuition rates the possibility of another 15, 20, or even 25 percent real home price decline as substantial. Is that the worst case scenario for the housing market right now? <laughs> You're trying to push me even further? <laughs> I don't know what the worst case, I don't want to think about the worst case scenario. You know, it's a speculative market. It's gotten more speculative. And, you know, people come in and go out of it. And they're poised to time the market now, much more than they've ever been. And the news doesn't look so encouraging right now. I mean, there's different takes on it, but uh, especially with us uh, talking about phasing out Fannie and Freddie, which are the main support of the housing market right now. Is that something to just to step into politics just for a minute, but is that something that's picking up speed in Washington, do you think? I think it's been picking up speed for a couple of years now. They, you know, the Dodd-Frank bill didn't do it. Uh, because I guess they can't do everything at once. Uh, mm. But I, I, you know, people are starting to wonder why are we subsidizing housing? It got us into, a, it helped get us into a bubble. And so the whole idea is somewhat tarnished now. Uh, Dr. Schiller, those numbers that I just mentioned, that 10, 15, 25 percent, what impact is this going to have on the broader economy? Well, I think home prices. Are, right now, they have an important effect on the economy because they have, they, the balance sheets of, of so many households and even banks and businesses are, are vulnerable. And uh, I, I don't like the, you know, what is it going to do to consumer saving? It's already at a high rate. What is it going to do to um, people's general sense of whether it's a good time to invest, to buy business? All these things are kind of intangibles, but they're not in most econometric models. They why, haven't thought about not? these things. Why not? Because we never had such a big bubble before. The, the bubble that we had in the early 2000s was the biggest ever in, I, I track it back to 1890, and I don't see anything like it. Mm. So it's a new phenomenon, and that means it's hard to forecast. Well, you know, you take it for granted that econometric forecasters are like weather forecasters, and they have their statistics, their leading indicators, but it doesn't work when we enter a new regime. And we should mention, though, because uh, you do mention that between 1975 and 2005, for that period, home prices did not fall. Why not? Between 1975 and... 2005. I yeah, uh, there was no, you mean there was never a fall in home prices? Mm -hmm. uh, interesting question. I think, you know, people get the idea for a while that home prices will only go up and it kind of becomes an expectation. I guess if market, they actually did fall briefly in the early 90s. Um, but I guess it's partly because, we, you know, over much of that period, we had a lot of inflation. So real f prices may have been falling, but nominal prices were going up. Right. Uh, it's part of an inflationary psychology that we had. But now inflation is coming way down, and we're, we're back into the old days again. And I think people are starting to worry again about home price declines. Let, let's take Forecasters a, are starting to predict them. Let's take a Go look at the, at, at the country, if we could, regionally. Where are we continuing to see weakness, and where are we seeing some strength? We're seeing weakness everywhere but Washington, D.C., of the 20 <laughs> cities that we report. And it's, it's ironic. That's the capital. That's, that's where the government is. The government persists through an economic crisis. Uh, but everywhere else, it's weak. And uh, it's particularly... Well, I mean, in places like Detroit, it's weak, uh, but that's for long-standing reasons. I think it's kind of a, 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 a uniform thing right now. The, 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 the markets, the housing markets used to be largely independent. As Alan Greenspan said, he didn't see a bubble, he saw foam <laughs> or froth. <laughs> a lot of little bubbles, maybe, here and there. But, you know, just as he said that, it became less true. Right. And the, the market started to cohere more than ever before. D Dr. Schiller, your index covers only single-family homes and only 20 U.S. cities. But the numbers contained in that monthly report by the National Association of Realtors are broader, and they cover single-family homes and condos for the entire U.S. Why the disparity? 
Well, we have condo indexes too. I'm not sure what, uh, uh, what how, the, how we can explain the disparity, but NAR numbers are falling too. So it's it there. And, and I can add that the repeat sales. Um, uh, commercial real estate indices are still falling. Mm. Both the CoStar indices and, and the Moody's indices are still going down. So it just seems to be a very weak time for all classes of real estate. Now, Dr. Schiller, in our last minute, last year was the worst in more than a decade for sales of previously owned homes. 2010 was also the worst for new home sales in nearly half a century. Can we, we cannot extricate the fact that new home construction and new home sales are linked to what's going on in the job market. How do we jumpstart both? <laughs> jumpstart suggests a really quick and sudden, when you jumpstart a car, it's humming <laughs> along in a matter of minutes, seconds. Uh, I don't know that we can jumpstart the economy, but I think you know that uh, it, it's gonna be a slow process. I think that more stimulus is still necessary. I've been arguing this for years that I think that unfortunately the political attitudes now are too worried about deficit spending. I mean deficit spending has to be brought under control but right now we're still in a weak economy yeah. and my worry is we're going to be still in a weak economy in years. Yeah. Uh, that's the, we missed the depression. <laughs> we're not in a depression yeah. but we may be in a similarly weak economy for some time to come uh -huh. and I think that we just have to do stimulus and yeah. uh, a number of reforms. Dodd-Frank was a good start but it's not the end. All right, Professor Robert Schiller of Yale University and Macro Markets LLC. Always good to have you on sir. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.